Um, there's a term that I, I want to share with you, and um, this is really the beginning of all achievement. Um, and the term is extreme ownership. And um, the word extreme is really important with ownership. Um, there's actually a great book right now called Extreme Ownership. Anyone ever read it? Uh, it's, uh, it's a Navy SEAL, a guy by the name of Jacko, and uh, he actually took all the Navy SEAL combat training techniques and he actually applied them to business and wrote a book about it. But what's interesting is, is the book is the, the foundational principle behind that book is that, that we must own everything in our lives in an extreme way. So if you if you were to start that tonight, you would look at yourself and you would say, okay, I'm in a certain place. I'm in a certain place economically. I'm in a certain place emotionally. I'm in a certain place relationally. I'm in a certain place physically. And then you would step back and you would say, I am wholly responsible for where I am today in my life. Now, it just got a little scary, didn't it? I mean, it just got really scary, right? if we're really honest with ourselves. Because what we want to do at that point is say, I say, whoa, wait a minute, you don't know. You don't know, Gene. You don't know the home I grew up in. You don't know what my dad was like. You don't know what my mom was like. You don't know about the lack of opportunity that I had. You don't know what that college professor was like that failed me. And that's true. But the reality is every single one of us in this room have stuff like that in our lives. Right? So every single one of us have things that we can point to that if we really want to, we can point to as reasons for our lack of success. Now, I've worked with an enormous amount of successful people. And the commonality, there are several, but the one I want to state right now is that every single one of them takes extreme ownership of where they are in their life. Extreme ownership of their activities, of their behaviors, of their conduct, of their thoughts, of every single thing in their lives. And they say, yeah, yeah, you know, there, there might be contributing factors, but it doesn't matter. Everybody has to completely own where they are. Now, the other secret in that is when you get to the point of truly owning everything in your life, there is enormous freedom in there because now you no longer have to you no longer have to try to fake it. You no longer have to try to make an excuse for your failure. You just say, yeah, I'm failing in this area. Okay. So now what do I do? Right? Once you get to that point where you can take extreme ownership in your life, now you're free. Because now you can actually have the conversation with yourself. Okay, now what? Now what do I need to do? And that's how, and that's how you go forward. Now, when, when you start from that point then, what you're going to find is that in anything that you want to accomplish, there are controllable and there are uncontrollable factors. If you can control every single controllable factor, you will find that the uncontrollable factors take care of themselves. So, let me give you an example. Let's say that you want to do more real estate deals this year. So, let's say you're going to do a mailing. Is that a controllable factor? Absolutely. It, are you, is it a completely controllable factor on your part? Absolutely. There's nothing about that activity that's outside of your control. Do that. Absolutely nothing. Now, is how you coordinate that with a website address? Control, yeah. Is how you put that information into a database control? Is the phone number you choose to put on the card control? Now, can you control whether that person calls you or not? No, but it's just a matter of statistics. If you do a mailing, a certain amount of people are gonna call you. So you have an uncontrollable factor that you manage based on a factor you can control. Now, when that person calls you, can you control when you pick up the phone or not? Yes. Absolutely. Now, 
let's say you pick up the phone and you have a conversation with that person. Can you control whether they are willing to meet with you to talk about their son and ask you? No, you can't. But if you control picking up the phone, then you'll find that a certain percentage of the people that you will talk to, you will end up in their house. Now, can you control when the person sells you that house and the price that makes it work for you? No. But can you control your ability to have that conversation? Um, the guy in the wholesaling podcast, I was listening to a couple of them today, actually, and uh, um, he was uh, he was talking about a script, and he was talking about the 2212 script. And uh, that's like my nickname for it. But what he was saying was that um, when, when he talks to potential, potential sellers, that he has a script that he teaches where he says two positive things, a negative thing, followed up by two positive things. Just a script. Now, can you control whether you use a script like that? Absolutely. Can you control how a person responds to it? No. But do you think that if you control how you say that script, do you think that's going to have an effect on how many people respond to it? Do you see a secret? If you learn to control everything in the process that you can control, you will find that the uncontrollable will begin to be tamed. It's just a matter of statistics. Right? If you want to do more deals, there's two ways to do more deals. One is talk to more people. The other is get better at the people you talk to. You know, whenever I'm uh, whenever I'm working uh, with a real estate agent and they're not meeting their performance goals, ninety um, percent of the time they're just not doing what they need to be doing. Ninety percent of the time. I mean, basic stuff. What time are you getting up? Uh, that's not early. <laughs> what time are you going to bed? That's too late. What are your favorite? What are your favorite three TV shows? This is this. Man, they're on right now. You watching them right now? That's not good enough. What are you binge watching on Netflix right now? Oh, you should see this new show. This came out. I'm like, that's not good enough. And then you know, then you get a new cycle. Oh no. How much news are you watching? Do you know that some of the most successful people I work with don't watch the news? It's <laughs> um, a good So 90% of the time, it's the activities and behaviors. So what that means is that you can control 90% of the outcome. Now, what do you think the other 10% of it is? <coughs> no, this is a real thing. What do you think it is? They stink at what they're trying to do. No, that's really it. But here's the thing. That's not, that's a problem that can be solved. So if I'm coaching someone and, and I'm saying, okay, are you <coughs> are you doing this and this and this and this and this and this and this? And they say, absolutely, James, I am doing those things every single day and they're just not working. I'll say, are you sure you're not lying to me? And let's say they're not, and they're really doing those things. And I said, okay, let's, let's roll that with it. Let's pretend that I own a home, and I need to sell it, and you're at my front door, and I just opened the door, and you're talking. What are you going to say? And they go, no, 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 no. I'm like, yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> okay, try this. Right? And we'll role play. And I'll say, okay, let's, I'll role play what you're supposed to say. You role play the other person, and let's role play it. And they'll say, okay. And I'll say, now you try. Now they'll try it, and it's like pulling teeth, right? It's like they're having to think through every single sentence. But then we'll role play it ten times. And you think by the tenth time they get a little bit better? Then we'll role play it twenty times. Then we'll role play it thirty times, and we'll be like, hey, come on, do I have to do this again? I'm like, yeah, do it again. You want to get good at this way? Then we'll then I'll say, okay, now this week I want you to go practice that. In as many situations as you can. And invariably, the same thing always happens. They come back a week later, and I'm like, wow! That is completely different. And suddenly, the light bulb goes on, right? Here's what I want to say. If you can get the first 
90% where you can actually do the activities, you will find that 100% of you can get the last 10% and they get really good at the activities. Because getting good at the activities is really only about practicing it over and over and over and over. And over. That's really, but let me say it differently. Any time that I'm learning something new, I always feel really stupid. Every time. It, it, it never goes well. And so what that means is that to really get good at something, you have to be able to live in the discomfort zone for a while until you get good at it. Now, here's the thing that really stinks. If you get really good at it, then you get comfortable at it. What if you just stop there? Then you don't get any better. So in order to get better, then you have to step back out of your comfort zone again and you have to get discomfort. And so you'll find that the people that really succeed at a high level are able emotionally to live in a space of discomfort on an ongoing basis while they're continuing to learn and grow new things. Have you guys ever heard of like Pat Flint? Heard of Pat Flint? Um, Really big, uh, really big kind of online guy. Anyway, um, he talks about how, you know, one thing that, that he teaches is that every single day, do something that you're really uncomfortable about doing. Like every single day. You sit down and, and you're out to lunch and the food comes and it's not what you ordered. Well, get uncomfortable. Talk to the waitress and say, hey, this is not what I ordered. Can you bring it back and please give me what I ordered? That's uncomfortable, right? 90% of people just wouldn't say a word, just for you. Or this is one of my favorites. Walking to a restaurant, my family eats on the this all the time. Walking to a restaurant, and the hostess seats us at the table that is next to the rotation. That is a horrible table. And I say, excuse me, can we sit there? And do you know like, how many waitresses at that point would say, well, no, 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 you have to sit here because this is the next waitress. Now, what would most people do in this situation? They would just sit there, right? I don't. I say, well, I understand all that, but I really want to sit there, so can we sit there? My point is that if you are really going to grow, you've got to live in a place of discomfort while you're learning new skills on a, on a weekly basis. 